Great to have you here, man. Hope things are well. Great to be here. Good venue here at Clancy's. And uh, yeah, things are very well, especially after last night's football win. Dude, congrats on all the success. I mean, that, let, let's just start there with Tennessee baseball being part of the conversation again. Yeah, I mean, I think you had a lot of things align. Uh, a lot of bitter players and coaches that we weren't able to play in 2020 when we had a very talented team. Uh, you also had just a lot of characters, a lot of guys that were uh, in-home personalities for fans and became, uh, you, you know, drew in fans because of their personality. And we had some talent, too, and then some drama that you couldn't, you couldn't create, you couldn't even draw it up. It kind of had to organically happen within games, and uh, it wasn't the perfect season because we didn't end the way we wanted to, but there was a lot of good memories. You had a nice atmosphere, a Thursday night game, football game, to have some recruits in last night. That's a big thing for all sports on campus. But typically, speaking of all sports on campus, it's not the head baseball coach at Tennessee that the SEC Network goes to uh, for the interview a lot of times. And they went to you last night, and you were on the broadcast. Pretty cool that Tennessee baseball is getting that shine. No, no, it was. It, it surprised me, and I think it surprised some of the guys. But, you know, Joe Milton can throw that thing, and uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a fastball. So they're always trying to be creative, and they do a great job of broadcasting games. So they wanted to tie in that fastball talk to how do you mix it up? Have you, how do you have a little bit of touch? And unfortunately, I'm a football fan, not a coach. But the bottom line is that kid's really talented. And uh, regardless of wins or losses, it's going to be a fun team to watch. In terms of uh, sustaining a program and building a program with what you've done at Tennessee, very down when you got here, the build up to what you had this past season, going to the College World Series, are you finding that the build was harder than sustaining or is now attempting to sustain this as difficult as building it the way you wanted it in the, in the beginning? I, I think it's going to be all about perspective. We're in the midst of it, so I can only guess, not give an accurate answer, but it's about perspective because we were so stressed out in that first season. We wanted to win, and we had so little room for error. Well, now kind of the, the, the story has changed a little bit to where expectations are going to be higher, and you go around, you meet all these fans that are tailgating, and they say, great job, but they also say, we want to go back to Omaha. And it's not easy to do, but that's where the standard is, and that's where, where we want it to be. Um, but I, I'm willing to bet it will be a little more challenging or taxing to uh, sustain the type of program that we want here. Do you think that the best teams in any sport take on the personality and the mantra of their head coach oftentimes? And did this team take on your per personality in a lot of ways? Yeah, I don't even answer this humbly. I, I think it's truthful. Um, in, in an SEC program, there's so many people involved with helping the kids now because the SEC network, uh, you know, football, there, there's good money in all these sports now. And we have a ton of people that are around our kids every day, strength coach, academic coordinator, trainer. And, and I think it's a, a combo of all those people. Head coach is one of them. But I think, yeah, they're, they're going to react to the people that are leading them every day and working to develop them and and our kids did that last year. You mentioned um, you, you've got the kids who have the personality, they're willing to show it. You're a coach who's willing to let them do that. And do you think in part that helps them stay loose in a way? I, I do. And unfortunately, we lost a little bit of that looseness in Omaha. But going back to your, your point, um, I, I think it's very hard to be a, a Tennessee baseball player. It was not that when we got here. Um, we don't want it to be easy to wear our jersey. Uh, and I don't think it is. So if they earn that right by going through all the things our guys have to do with our strength coach especially, um, then they've earned the right to be themselves. So it's, you know, kind of eat your meat and potatoes and you get your dessert. Is it now where, I mean, I think, you know, there's you talked about humility with this or not being humble about it, but Tennessee baseball really does reflect, I think, what you've built but also your personality do you find that now guys that you're recruiting and the guys that attach themselves to Tennessee baseball that may choose Tennessee over some other SEC programs maybe reflect a little bit of this last team that you had and you see guys being like you being drawn to you and the team? Yeah, we're, we're going to have to talk off the air because we <laughs> literally just got a perfect example of that committed to us. He's a kid who could have went anywhere in the country, narrowed it down to SEC schools only, um, some of the upper half SEC schools, if that's a fair way to say it. And he selected us because of match, not because we had the highest offer or anything else, best sales pitch. It was because he saw um, 
in himself what was kind of reflected by our players through the TV last year. And it truly is a good match. And, and that's all we're looking for. Um, there's a ton of good players across the country, but it's a lot easier to recruit uh, kind of what your style is than to coach it. And, and now I think that filter is kind of automatically there with social media and TV. People can see the way we play and then the way other people play. Is it easier now to recruit high school kids who could go to the draft to come to college than it was 10 years ago? It's getting there. When a Brady House gets $5 million that we had signed this year, uh, you're not going to win that battle. Right, right. Um, we also lost a battle with a kid who signed for 1.1. That was a tough pill to swallow. It, a lot of times it's case by case, but by percentage, yes, it is getting easier because there's fewer minor league teams and now SEC ball with travel and our stadium environment and fortunately some wins under our belt for our program and I think in college in general, more and more kids are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel that let's follow the natural sequence of life and my development and go to college first. Mm -hmm. What a moment to open your NCAA tournament run uh, with the walk-off Grand Slam. Uh, it's so rare in sports that you get that perfect opportunity you know, people are paying attention. A lot more people are jumping into the bandwagon at that time of year in, in college baseball. And to have that moment that Tennessee fans that maybe didn't even follow baseball are going to remember uh, for a long time, pretty cool when all that lines up that way. No, it is, and, and I was alluding to that earlier. That, that wasn't the only, you know, the Fergie Grand Slam against Arkansas and, and yeah. some other moments that, you know, a loss against Alabama that was crazy. There was just some things in there that provided people a lot to talk about, and people were starving for things to talk about in general. But that moment itself was insane. A funny part about that in the transfer portal is we call a kid from Wright State. I won't throw him under the bus. And he was one of their best players. And he said that was one of the coolest moments in sports. And to have him say that was astonishing because he was on the broken heart end of that deal. But I, I think it was such a cool moment. It was hard to ignore no matter what jersey you were wearing, uh, how special it was. Do you have a lot of friends that are head coaches in the SEC across the league? Or is that something you don't really concern yourself with? You know, I really don't. It's, you know, more... Bo Brad Bohannon from Alabama, we came up at the same time and you always saw him on the road. We were always at the same events. So there was a mutual respect there. We get along well. Um, so I conversate with him more colleague to colleague than anybody. Um, the other guys, to be honest with you, are guys I look up to and respect. Um, you, you can't ignore what some of these guys have done. Like Coach Bianco has created that thing out of thin air down there at Mississippi. So while I dislike him and dislike his team, um, I certainly respect what he's done. And Dave Van Horn was a mentor to me. A lot of Twitter stuff blew up about that deal last year. But all that was was, you know, me speaking my mind and him, his, you know, obviously he spoke his mind back. He kind of <laughs> snapped. But we're as cordial as it gets. And, and I would not be in this position if it wasn't for working in the SEC at Arkansas. So I'm a fan of some of these guys that have done more than I have. And, you know, we aspire to, you know, do what Florida's done or, or some of the other schools in our league. Is Vanderbilt the goal when you take over an in-state program in Tennessee? Because we saw with Tennessee's fall before you got here, that's where Tim Corbin was coming in and doing big things at Vanderbilt. Or because of the different nature of public versus private in the schools, maybe that's not really your concern as much as a Florida or some other programs you're recruiting against. Yeah, I think you just nailed it with the second part, apples and oranges. Yes, we have to play against each other, so – that may sound awkward, but in my opinion, it's two totally different things. City versus, I know it's a city here, but this is a college town, man. We revolve around the Vols around here. Um, you know, public versus private, scholarship advantage versus not, style of coaching, style of kid. It's just different. And uh, we're not looking to necessarily go head to head against them as much as we are trying to be the best version of the University of Tennessee baseball as we can. Tony Vitello, our guest, to hear Danny White talk. Uh, we're talking to the guy who's going to be determining the upgrades to the stadium. Where do you start? <laughs> I, I think you start with the blank canvas we have down the left field line. And uh, we are fortunate enough to bring in uh, temporary bleachers last year. We'll also do that to some extent this year at the direction of, of Danny White, who wants to increase capacity. We don't want people that want to come to the games without a ticket or getting on StubHub and having to pay $300. So eventually we'll be able to break ground. Um, it, it's been a frustrating deal because there's so much red tape with state legislation. 
uh, that you really can't act right away, even if you do have all the money in the bank. And there is quite a bit of money in the bank. So all we can do is just continue to have conversations, come up with ideas. And I don't think it'll be for about another month and a half before we come up with some concrete ideas. And then there's many steps along the way. But left field, without a doubt, we, we need to complete our stadium so it's a, a surrounding deal aesthetically, but also the opponent is surrounded by people in orange everywhere you look. What are you prevented from doing right now because of the legislation? Um, getting approved, and they've given like doing me, anything really. Yeah, no, it has to be temporary. If it's temporary, it can be done now. And I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but um, honesty gets me in trouble a little too much. But the porches are that's temporary. The porches are not. They're a lot of fun, and it's a blue-collar deal, but that's not a great structure that's going on out there in left field. Those were supposed to eventually become a, a, a natural grandstand and have a little bit more of a, a bigger appeal to fans to it, but it's worked out what it is. Um, but in order to actually dig into the ground, you got to go through seven or eight steps. What's the, what's the right capacity? You know, um, Paul Mano's is the best Italian restaurant as an Italian guy in St. Louis, in my opinion. Um, Paul built out built a, uh, a small restaurant. It went well. He added on a little bit. It continued to go well. He added on to a little bit. And now it's a fairly big size restaurant, but he's not going to go crazy. I, I don't think you want a bunch of empty s seats. And I don't think you want to you know, dream too big in that category. I think we can work our way to nine or 10,000, but I don't see a need to do it immediately. I, I think it, it, it needs to be, let's prove ourselves to a certain capacity and then increase from there. You were hired by John Curry. You worked under Philip Fulmer. Now you're working under Danny White. Danny White strikes me as, as a businessman who appreciates winners. And if you win, that's what matters most to him, and he's going to support that. What's it been like for you and your experience to work with Danny White? It, it's been interesting because it's a complete flip of what was going on. And Coach Fulmer and I had a relationship before we worked together, but he was a head coach of the athletic department, yeah. and he was a mentor to the head coach. Um, Danny White has been bred to be an athletic director. And what I've learned is when he's in his element, which is last night surveying the field and seeing what needs to be adjusted at football games with music and other things like that, and then walking around the stadium and knowing where premium seats need to be, um, where you can fill in gaps, where does a lobby need to go, uh, just keep my mouth shut because I'm a coach <laughs> and he's an athletic director. And I think he respects that space, vice versa, He's not looking to bog us down with meetings or um, anything else that's telling us how to do our job. It's He's going to do everything he can to support our athletes and make it attractive for fans. And then our job is to win games. Anything to the, the discussion about you uh, being in the mix for openings while you were in Omaha? Uh, yes, there was. And, um, you know, throughout the year, it was, it was difficult. I think the assistants got frustrated with me. I leaned on Jimmy Sexton as my guy. We yep. had conversations left and right, but I didn't want to get him back to our players. And I'll, I'll tell you this about that whole deal. Um, I think I did a pretty good job of keeping it from the assistants, but um, eventually time waned on, and I pulled in one of the injured guys into the office. I said, do we have a better chance of beating LSU if the guys know I want to stay here and we're going to stay here? And he said, to be honest with you, and I said, yeah, that's why I called you up here. You're an honest guy. They don't care. It's too strong of a bond we have in that locker room. They realize some things are going on. We gave them a loyal T-shirt, um, you know, during the SEC tournament. They took that as an innuendo that they should have, um, okay. that we were loyal to this place. He said, once you did that, we kind of thought that. But honestly, you do what you got to do. This is about this year, and this is about this club, and there was a, a lot of strong love in that locker room. So your assistants were more upset than the players? I, I think they were. They wanted to know where the hell they were living the next year. <laughs> um, but a big thing is that word, living. You, you also have to live life, not just work. And people that are a part of our staff love Knoxville. They love the people that are in this area. And the only question we had in the back of our mind is, can we continually win here? And one of the things you have to have to continually win is a facility and fans that will help you win games. If you look at SEC teams in our league, they don't have great records on the road. They have great records at home. And our fans won us over, starting with the Vanderbilt series, Arkansas series, and then definitely the regional. Hey, they can make this place a hornet's nest. And it actually might not be the biggest stadium, but it might become the toughest place to play in our league. I think you'll appreciate this. Chad and I had a conversation when all that chatter was going on. And we said, can you imagine, with, with the intensity of Tony Vitello, 
if he is the head coach at LSU after leaving Tennessee with all of the craziness between the two programs, right? right. And the fan base is going back and forth, and now he leaves for LSU. I mean, you would have to appreciate that from from the fan base's perspective and the trash talk that would have been taking place. That still will, honestly. Yeah, there would have been some slash tires <laughs> and, and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know, again, this is a, a great place. And, and when we got here, uh, we started right away. We wanted to win immediately. It's how we kind of dumbed our way into Garrett Crochet. And we've invested a lot, and we want to see it through. And, uh, again, I, I think the fans, Danny showed that he's all in. We have what we need to sustain success, so now we just need to go out and do it. And all we ask is those fans remain as positive as they've been with us because there will be ups and downs, especially with our sport in the draft. But I can assure you we are working as hard as possible to keep this thing going because the excitement and the momentum is, has really swept us off our feet. The fans were at our show yesterday. Uh, legends of Lindsey Nelson were, were back there uh, chanting about Vols baseball. So they'll be back, as well, you well know. We want them back, and we're making sure we, we set a certain amount of seats for them. We need to get them some gear. We need to take care of them as much as they there take you go. care of us. They asked about that. There you go. There's your there answer. Hey, thank you so much for joining us here. I know you're you're hot on the recruiting trail right now. You're back at it as soon as you walk out of here. So thanks for joining us on site. Final visit uh, with a live guest while we're in Knoxville, Chad. This yeah, has been two, great. Two-day tour of Knoxville, and this is our final guest. So thanks for swinging by. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having us on, and thank you to all the fans that have supported us. Tony Vitello, the thanks head for coach watching. Be sure for the University of Tennessee the Baseball so Program. So you're notified every time Outkick 360 goes live. We are live weekdays, 11 a.m. Central, noon Eastern, right here across the Outkick Network. And while you're at it, like this video and let us know what you think in the comments below.